Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This lesson, we're going to talk about constructors. And so what constructors allow you to do is to have something run automatically when you instantiate an instance of an object. So to show you this, let's go ahead and just copy all this code here. And let's open up our new file. And so we're going to create a new function called public function and under underscore underscore construct so that's the name that's how you name the constructor if you're looking at really old tutorials you may see tutorials where there's a, um, a method in there that has the same name as the class so it might have been something like um, function my class that's how constructors were done in the past, but now there's an actual constructor method that you want to use. And I think at this point it even will, uh, it, if you use the name of the class, for a while there both would work, this constructor method and the a function with the same name as the class. I don't think the function with the same name of the class even works anymore. And regardless, you, you want to use this. You want to use this construct method here. So what this does is anything you put inside this method when you instantiate an instance of a class, it's going to run this method automatically. You don't have to call it or anything like that. And so this is good for anything that you need to do to set up your database. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's, maybe you want to put, uh, if you're writing a database class, you want to put your MySQL connection details in there. Um, or maybe there's something you need to do with post data. Or there's lots of things that you'd want to do within a constructor. But the main thing is that it runs when uh, this class is, class is instantiated. So to sort of show you this, what we'll do is we're going to take this var and we're going to change it to meh oop is i. Okay, <laughs> so what, we're, what we've essentially done here is we have this variable that we've set up here, but now in our constructor, we're resetting it to something different. And so when we instantiate an instance of this class, what should happen is this will run and this will overwrite what we've set here. And actually real quick, I need to remove this post ID because we don't actually have one. And so now when we come down here to echo this, it should echo what we've set in our constructor here. So let's go ahead and uh, load this page. And you can see we get meh, oop is I. So that's what constructors allow us to do. And now it doesn't have to be just overriding variables. It could quite literally be anything that you want to do here that you need to set up that needs to run right when this is instantiated that the rest of the class is going to be pretty much dependent on. Now, another thing that you can do with constructors that's important to know is you can put in variables. So let's go ahead and just change, add a variable here called text. Now, instead of hard coding this here, we can get rid of that and we can set this equal to text. So now what's going to happen is we can pass in the text into our class when we instantiate it. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. We can pass this in and now our variable, uh, of this this variable here will be set to whatever we pass in and so what you have is a fairly standard sort of thing that you'll see in classes in that in the variable declaration up here you'll have some sort of default this now is basically serving as a default and here you know you will have something that you can overwrite it with in your constructor here okay so if we come down here now in order to use this text now we have to add in our parentheses and then we can pass in our text right here so if we save that and refresh that we're going to still get meh oop is i and then we can change this to anything we want to Let's just say hi and you can see now that's getting passed in now, if you start to think about that a little bit, you can start to see the power of some of this because now you can, whatever this text is, there's, you could go through and maybe you want to format this text. Maybe you want to, I don't know, there's also, maybe you want to uh, change what the text is based off of certain conditions or there's all sorts of different 
uh, routines, you could run this text that got passed in through, but you could literally pass in any text. And so this is the whole idea of what a class really is. When we talk about uh, in the conceptual terms that the, the class is a blueprint and the object is the actual thing and it is the data that you have when you uh, instantiate an instance of a class that changes what the uh, what you get from the blueprint so meaning you know a blueprint for a house doesn't tell you the color of the house so when you actually go and create the house that's when you decide on the color this is the same idea this doesn't tell you what the text has to be right it doesn't say okay we may have a sort of default but it doesn't really say what the text is you can pass in any text so now this object okay if we do this again and we'll go just go new class and we'll reference new class here we can get rid of this post equal stuff we don't actually need that here Okay, so I want to show you this. So we have two different instances of our class. The blueprint is the same, but all we've done is created two different instances and we've passed in different data. So we have my class and then we run my function. We have new class, which passes in hey. So if we refresh this, you see we have hi and we have hey. Those are literally two different objects. Those are two different houses. And the way that we change them is based off of the data that we passed into uh, our, our class here. So that's the power of this. We change nothing up here to get these two instances. Now, of course, as you have more complex applications, you're going to have more complex classes. They're going to do more complex things. And so the differences here and maybe the data you'll pass in here or the data you'll grab from a database or whatever, whatever it happens to be doing, is going to make those two objects very, very different. If you think about, let's just take WordPress. If you think about two different WordPress posts, well, they have a completely different title. They have completely different content. They're going to have completely different uh, featured image, date that they were created, maybe author. They're really two completely different, two posts on a blog are two completely different. But the class, the blueprint, for getting them to the point where they're displayed on the page and they're and storing them in the database and everything that needs to happen, the class is the same. So you can create two very different objects from the same blueprint. And that's really what object-oriented programming is. And again, getting back to individual objects, sort of having individual classes that, that deal and handle with, handle their, their functionality. It's not a hard fact. I don't want to... Um, mislead and then say that that's a hard fast rule you absolutely have to do that but that is the general sort of way that you kind of look at uh, at least at a baseline how you look at object-oriented programming so again that's dealing with constructors that's what they allow you to add to your classes that make them uh, that can start to make them really really powerful so hopefully you got something out of that thanks for watching we'll talk to you in the next one